Today, we're going to dive in, put some ferrite on some coax to help eliminate common mode current. We'll talk about that, different mixes of ferrites and some other stuff. Let's go. The mysterious ferrite. There's so many mixes, so many different shapes and sizes. I'm lost. What do I do? Hopefully, I'm going to help you out here. Links in the description below before we get started with this. Get your ferrite from a reputable source. I get mine from Palomar. Because you know if you order Mix 31 ferrite or Mix 73, whatever ferrite you want, you're going to get Mix 31. Okay. If you order off of Amazon or eBay or Alibaba or whatever kind of chinese stuff you might get, it might be labeled as Mix 31, but you might not get Mix 31. You have to, you have to be careful. Also in the description below is a link to a great video that the Smoking Ape did about how to identify what mix of ferrite you have if you have an oscilloscope and a known good sample. So if you have a known good sample of mix 31 that you know for sure is mix 31, you can do some cool stuff and test your unknown samples and compare it against the mix 31 to see if it has the same characteristics. Really good video by the Smoking Ape. That's in the description below as well. What is ferrite? Okay, so in our application here, what we want to do is put ferrite on the outside jacket of our coax to limit common mode current. Okay, that's not differential current, it's common mode current. A ferrite bead or a coax looped through a, a toroidal core um it presents an impedance to common mode current okay the differential currents that are going to and from your antenna will pass through with no problem at all just the common mode current that we're trying to get rid of here rf you got to remember travels on the surface of the conductor okay the rf signals that we want to keep are contained inside the the center of the coax and inside the face of the braid. Okay, we want to keep those. The RF that we don't want to get back into our shack, get back into our radio, known as common mode current, travels on the outside of the coax braid. And the ferrite chokes that we're going to put on help to get rid of that. So what type, what mix of ferrite chokes do we commonly want to make an RF choke, to choke off that common mode current? It's going to be mix 31, mix 31. What mix 31 ferrite is good for is between, I believe, 1 and 300 ish megahertz. So that's going to be right in our hand band. Unless you get super high frequency above 300 megahertz, this is going to work good. It's going to work great for an RF choke. Mix 31, while good for RF chokes, is not good if you're doing like a multi ratio impedance transformer, like a, a Balin or an un, un or something like that. If you're making a transformer that transforms impedances, you don't want to use a mix 31. Use something else like a mix 73 or something that's going to fit the bill a little bit better than that. Where to place your choke. This is, this is a topic of, I guess, controversy. I'm going to give my opinion on it. I may be totally wrong. Love to hear your comments in the chat below, but since we're stopping common mode current on the coax, where to put that choke, whether on the side of the radio or the side of the antenna, makes a difference depending on what type of antenna you're using. Okay, If you're using an NFED half wave that doesn't have a dedicated counterpoise, that antenna system relies on your coax itself to be the other half of that antenna. So your coax is acting as the counterpoise. So you really don't want to block the common mode current on that piece of coax. So you don't want to choke it at the antenna side. You want to choke it at the radio side. Gonna make sense? So if the coax itself is acting as the other half of your antenna, I lie an NFED half wave, choke it at the radio side. If you have a resonant antenna, and or you have an antenna that has its own ground radials and you don't 
want your coax itself to be a part of the antenna system, then choke it on the antenna side. Hopefully that makes sense here. Let's dive down. I'm going to show you what we're going to do. I have a piece of RG8X that we're going to put some chokes on. I think we're going to put uh, five ferrite beads on them. I'm going to show you how I do it. Um, so they're kind of permanently on there because I like my coax to be choked. So let's drop down to the table and uh, let's choke it. All right. Welcome to the desk. Here I got some Snap-on Mix 31. Excuse my busted thumb my snap-on mix 31 and i got uh, i got five of these that i'm gonna put i already took one of them apart that's why it's not on screen here but i'll show you how to take one of these apart because we're gonna want to well the way i do it you're gonna want to and i have a piece of rg8x this happens to be from dx engineering now you can get coax with built-on chokes already from the manufacturer i know abr industries have those i have a a 50 foot run of ABR industries that uh, you can order with chokes already on it. So you don't have to put them on there yourself. ABR makes some good stuff. I highly, highly recommend them, but we're going to put it on this RG8X. Now you don't have to do my method. If you want to, you can just take this snap on choke. You can put it on here and you can just snap it down and you can put, you know, four or five of them in line. And be good to go but i'm going to show you what i do because when i choke a piece of coax I, I mean i want them on there i'm not going to take it back off for any reason that i can think of so first thing we want to do is take the ferrite cores out of the little snap-on jackets so just get uh you can do it with a little screwdriver or anything i just have my little utility knife here if you right on the edge if you just put your something in there you can pry the core right out. Doesn't take much pressure at all. Just uh, stick your knife or something in there and pry the core out. And there you have your actual ferrite cores in two different pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of these right fast. I'll fast forward so you're not bored to death. All right, there we have it. We have our ferrite cores all taken out of their jackets or their little snap-on coverings, and we just have the raw ferrite core. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna put these on the coax. Let's do it. All right, we're gonna snap these on the coax now. But what I do is, let me see if I can get my coax situated where it's not gonna fall off on me here, so I can just leave it here. Okay, these are gonna sit here, one on the bottom, one on the top, just like a normal core would. But we have to find some way to hold these so we can put more on here without these just falling off. So what I like to do, and I'm going to start a little bit down from the label here. Reach over here and get my my super glue. Just a little bit of Gorilla super glue. And it doesn't take much. We're not going to use a whole big bunches. Put a little dot and just a little dot. A little dot of super glue, little dot of super glue. And then just hold it for a second. And that is going to make that core stick on there so we can do the rest of them. Now your next core, you are going to abut the one you just did. Make sure it's, you know, up there. Put a dab of glue, dab of glue. Put the top on it and keep on going till you run out of cores. Boom, there you have it. I'm gonna do five cores on this one. So there they are, all glued onto your coax. Well, they're not glued onto the coax, they're glued half and half together. That way we can move this around and not have them worry about falling apart. Now, what I like to do is put a piece of heat shrink over this. Unfortunately, I don't have one piece of heat shrink that's long enough. I'm gonna have to overlap and do two sections of heat shrinks. Let's do that now. All right, heat shrink time. We got our heat shrink tubing right here. Now, all right, so the reason why we glued them is so you can pick this coax up like this and not have to worry about these cores falling all over the place. 
this coax already has a connector on it. Um, if you don't have a connector on your coax already, you can use different size heat shrinks. That'll be better. I got a feeling this heat shrink is going to be too large on the end to shrink around the coax itself. So we might have to finagle with it just a bit, but we're going to put the heat shrink over the cores and we're going to make sure they're all together. See how the, the cores aren't really glued to the coax. I got one stuck in there. Get out. <laughs> there. And uh, so we're going to go down a little bit with our heat shrink there. That's a good little distance, I think, from that core. Maybe we can go a little bit more. I need something to reach up there and hold that core from sliding while I push the heat shrink down. There we go. There. So my end of the core is right there. Heat shrink comes there. There. Let's go ahead and heat this one up first. Get it on there. Then we'll slide this other piece of heat shrink over the rest of these. All right, we got this halfway done with the heat shrink over the cores. And like I thought, this isn't going to be big enough to shrink down over here. So what we'll do is just put some electrical tape on here when we're done, just to make it look a little bit prettier, I guess. I'm going to let this cool down for a minute before I slide the other heat shrink over it and uh, see what happens. Try not to burn myself with the heat gun. That ain't no fun. All right, we got it all heat shrinked up. Hot. And as soon as this cools off a little bit, I will uh, lay a section of tape on the very ends to uh, smooth these out. All right, well, there we have it. I put a little bit of electrical tape on the ends there just to pretty it up a little bit. But uh, there it is. Five chokes. Ferrite cores, rather, five uh, Mix 31 ferrite cores on the end of your coax to help stop common mode current from coming down your line and causing radio frequency interference or RFI. Hopefully, that'll help somebody out. And uh, if you're experiencing RFI in your shack, it might be common mode. Choke that coax. It might help out a great deer. Links in the description below, like I said, to uh, Palomar for reputable mix 31 cores or snap on beads and uh, also to the smoking apes video about how to test your toroids as he says to see if uh you got the mix that you thought you bought which is uh, always a problem unless you buy them from a reputable place give this video a thumbs up and a like and if you like this kind of content man i'd really Appreciate a subscription. Really helps out the YouTube algorithm. And consider becoming a channel member as well for early access to videos. Hopefully, y'all have a great week. And uh, it's Wednesday. We'll see you tonight on the stream. 73.